Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be attempting to make my first three-dimensional cake. You know, a 3D cake, one that looks like a thing other than a cake. I'm going to be attempting that today in celebration of Thanksgiving. Here in the US, we're going to be soon celebrating Thanksgiving, the Harvest Festival, and the time to be grateful with friends and family. And that means turkey. It's the iconic symbolic food of Thanksgiving. It's the whole roasted turkey. So the reason why I mention this is lovely Margarita got in touch with me via Facebook yesterday and shared a turkey cake with me. An amazing turkey cake made by Sarah Hardy. I will put the link to her blog post down below. She made this cake that looks like a raw turkey. She gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. So I said, Fine. I went to the grocery store <laughs> today and I've spent all day. It is one o'clock in the morning. I started making this project at 1 p.m. and we stopped for dinner and I haven't stopped since. This recipe is something else. And, and that doesn't even include baking time because my oven's broken and I didn't bake the cakes. I actually bought sheet cakes from my grocery store because I knew I had to get this done before Thanksgiving and this was all assembly and putting this cake together so let me walk you through the steps of how i built this incredible turkey cake raw turkey cake <laughs> it's so funny it's so stinking funny so i knew i had to at least attempt it so what you're going to need are three half sheet cakes and i purchased mine from the grocery store already made they were not frosted i was so grateful because i knew i wouldn't be able to bake them in my toaster oven which i've been using because the cakes were so large so give thanks to the grocery store bake shop you're also going to need a large amount of buttercream now sarah and her recipe says you're going to need four pounds and i used about half of that so i would say two and a half pounds of buttercream frosting should be ample for this recipe and the buttercream frosting recipe that I used was from Live Well Bake Often. I will also put the link down below to that recipe. So I used eight sticks of butter that I had at room temperature, place that into a stand mixer. So then on medium low speed, you're gonna whip this up until the butter is really smooth. Next, we're gonna add our powdered sugar. And I did this in four intervals. We did three cups at a time. And make sure you turn on the motor very slowly, otherwise you're gonna have a nice explosion of powdered sugar everywhere. So towards the end, the mixture is gonna get very, very full. So if you take a dishcloth and put that on top, that really will help with the powdered sugar getting everywhere. Then you're gonna add six to eight tablespoons of heavy cream. And I added these additions along with my powdered sugar. And then you're gonna add three teaspoons of vanilla. Here's something that's very interesting. We're gonna take our buttercream and we're gonna dye it reddish pink. So add some paste food coloring until you get this nice, vibrant red pink color. And the reason why we're doing that was we're gonna cover the cake with a thin layer of marzipan, which is gonna be like the turkey skin. And we want the buttercream to show through the skin so it looks kind of fleshy. So before we dye it red, we're gonna set aside about a third of our buttercream and we're gonna dye that blue. And that combination of red and blue is supposed to get us this kind of really raw, fleshy, tone so before we cut out our cakes we're going to apply a little bit of simple syrup which is 140 grams of sugar with one cup of water and we're going to mix that well until all the sugars and then we're going to brush that onto our cakes and allow that to soak in sarah very kindly shares a template on how to build the actual turkey carcass so rather than printing out the template, I free drew these shapes onto some paper and then I transferred that onto wax paper, which I then placed on top of the cake. And then I took a paring knife and cut all of the pieces out. So I took a cake board and I cut it so it would fit inside of my turkey baking tray. And then I used a little buttercream to fix that to a turntable. It's not a real Lazy Susan, it's just a turntable I happen to have. So I fixed that on there with a little bit of buttercream so it wouldn't move. Then I placed my first cutout, the largest piece of cake, onto the cake board. Again, fixing it with a bit of buttercream. And then I added a layer of buttercream right on top of my base piece number one. Then I added the next layer, base number two, and then frosted that as well. And then added number three on top of that. And then I frosted that layer on top and then I added the two chicken breast pieces. So you're gonna take a little scrap of cake and you're gonna add a piece right in between the two breast pieces and that's gonna be kind of the keel of the turkey. 
Now, if you have the refrigerator space, this would be a good time to chill your cake. This will help everything kind of solidify and make the carving process a little bit better. My turkey was way too big for my fridge, so I didn't do that. But my cake was pretty chilled already when I got it from the grocery store. It was actually taken out of the freezer. So I just went on ahead and just take a serrated bread knife and start carving away. So around the base of the cake, you wanna undercut so it looks like it's actually a three-dimensional cake. Also gonna create a valley in between the two breast pieces and that's gonna look like the kind of breast of the turkey. You're also gonna leave a little bit of a shelf around the edge. That's where your wing and your drumstick pieces are gonna rest. So make sure you leave a little bit of a shelf. You're also gonna dig out a cavity and you're gonna build up the walls a little bit, again, with some scrap pieces of cake and also the bottom part of the cavity you're going to line with some scrap cake as well. Once you have the basic carcass shaped out, you're going to take your red, pink buttercream frosting and you're going to do a crumb coat. Now this was really, really fiddly for me because I didn't have a chilled cake. So if possible, clear out your refrigerator and try to get this thing to fit because it will make your life a lot easier, which I figured out on my wing pieces. When you chill the cake, it makes the buttercream spread a lot easier. So now we're gonna add a little bit of blue to the bottom edge of the turkey and then the top of the breast and a little bit on the wings. The wings were entirely blue in the blog post, so I did my wings blue too. So next we're gonna place the drumstick portion. And we're gonna put a little bit of buttercream and stick those right on the side. There should be a little shelf that you've left behind for the thigh pieces to rest on. So I didn't trust just using buttercream, so I used a couple paper straws and also a couple dowels to kind of just hold everything together. Just poked it right through. Then for the ends of the drumsticks, we're gonna take a couple of Rice Krispie treats and really crush them and compress them to get the knobby part of the drumstick. So Sarah just glues hers on with buttercream. I used a toothpick to give it a little bit more structure. And because of the way my drumsticks were sticking up, I used a couple toothpicks down below too to kind of prop them up because gravity wanted to push them down. But if you arrange your drumsticks in a way that they're actually touching the cake, then you probably won't have to do that. So now we've got our drumsticks assembled. It's finally looking like a turkey. Next, we're gonna do our wings. In Sarah's instructions, she stuck the wings on and then just crumb coated everything. And then she said that she put the marzipan over everything. But when I really looked at her pictures, it looked like she did the wings separately because the marzipan was tucked all the way around the wings. So that's what I did. I did the wings separately. I crumb coated them with the buttercream and then I wrapped them in marzipan separately and stuck them on after so they would look like they were completely kind of separate from the bird. Whether or not that was such a good plan, we'll talk about that later. Next, we're gonna take our marzipan and marzipan is almond paste and Sarah specifically says to use a white marzipan. I had some marzipan that I actually picked up at Ikea and it has more of a kind of golden yellow hue to it. So I went to the grocery store and bought a bunch of marzipan. Now marzipan is not cheap. One box like this costs about six to seven bucks and I end up using about four or five of these. So take some marzipan, knead it so it's nice and warm. I'm gonna make a little snake and cut it into little bits and roll those into balls. Now we're gonna take those balls and now we're going to put them all over our turkey. We're gonna put them in kind of rows. There should be a bit of a pattern and that's gonna simulate the kind of lumpy, bumpy, like turkey skin. So now our turkey looks fabulous. It's pink, blue, and covered with these warts. <laughs> and now we're going to cover it with marzipan. So take your marzipan and I used four of these sticks and give it a nice knead until it's nice and warm and everything is kind of cohesive. And then use some powdered sugar and dust your work surface because marzipan is sticky and it will stick to your countertop. I found that marzipan dries out pretty quickly, so don't add too much powdered sugar. In Sarah's instructions, it seems like it's really malleable and supple and really blends in and it's really easy to use. And I did not find that to be the case. <laughs> but again, this was my first time. Now we're gonna roll this out very, very, very thinly. Again, we want the buttercream to come through the marzipan. So we want it nice and thin. And while we're rolling it, we wanna keep moving it to make sure that it's not sticking to the countertop. 
Now we're going to roll the Mars pan up. I'm sorry I don't have footage of this because I forgot to turn on my camera. But you're going to take the Mars pan and roll it onto a rolling pin and then carefully drape it onto your buttercream turkey. Now we're going to tuck as best we can, very much like you would use fondant for a cake, and try to not have too many wrinkles, but kind of press it gently into the crevices and drape this one piece of skin all over your turkey. That's what really will simulate this look of skin. If you have some tears, you can take some marzipan and try to attempt to patch it. I didn't have much luck with patching. I used water, I tried to blend it, I spent so much time patching and trying to fix tears and I didn't have as much success as I would like, but again, this is my first time using marzipan. If you used marzipan before, you have some expert advice please let me know because I really, really, really struggled. But the bumps of marzipan really did come through and gave this really great look of turkey skin. We're gonna do the same thing for the wings. After we've buttercreamed them, I had them in the refrigerator, we're going to wrap them in marzipan and then we're gonna affix the wings onto the turkey carcass. And this was definitely the trickiest part for me. And if I did this again, which I don't think I ever will do, <laughs> I think I will try to affix the wings along with the thighs and then just drape a single piece of marzipan over the whole thing and just kind of just roll with it. So after the cake is covered with marzipan, now we're going to take that simple syrup that we made earlier and take a brush and brush that all over the marzipan and that will give the cake a sheen and make it look like a raw turkey. And there you have it, the beautiful raw turkey cake. <laughs> And after many, many hours, this is my final result. <laughs> you see this thing? This is my raw turkey cake. Isn't it amazing? Now, I have to say, if I were to do this again, I would not put so much blue on the wings. Now, I followed the instructions to the T. Sarah completely covered her wings with blue. And maybe she did that just for contrast so you could see the wings better and she changed it later because my wings are way too blue but I have wings they are on the bird so I am actually quite pleased I don't know if I'm pleased if more just relieved because this has been just a marathon turkey cake making process and I have learned a lot I've learned a ton and I love the fact that this is in an actual foil baking tray. I think it's so hilarious and funny. This cake is huge and it is very heavy. <laughs> and part of me does not want to cut into this, but cut we must because we must taste our turkey cake. So let's do this. I'm just gonna cut a wedge right here so you can see that indeed this is a cake. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, all these hours and now I'm just gonna knife into it. But, all right, here we go. Oh. It's kind of satisfying, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> there it is. All righty. There it is, my turkey cake. <laughs> Alrighty, let's give this giant abomination a taste. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, itadakimasu. Oh, that was a huge bite of buttercream. Oh my gosh, so sweet. It's delicious though, real buttercream frosting it was so delicious. There's just no comparison. And after you've had real buttercream frosting, you know instantly when you're not having the real deal. Real buttercream frosting is so stinking delicious. That was just a huge bite of it. You don't need that much, certainly. The cake tastes like a yellow cake. It's fluffy. It tastes like store-bought cupcakes. I'm sure it's the same batter. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. It's very light and fluffy. It tastes like a yellow cake. So it has a little bit of a kind of a buttery flavor to it, but it's the buttercream that's a real star here. And the marzipan's quite nice too. Mm -hmm. 
It has a nice little chew to it. It's a very, very thin layer, but it has a lovely almond flavor to it. Really nice little combination of vanilla buttercream and almond Mars pen. So there you have it, my lovelies. A raw turkey cake made by an amateur. But it's definitely possible and feasible. And should you do it, mm, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this project because it is a very long and arduous and laborious one. But I did it for you, so you didn't have to. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. I hope if you're celebrating Thanksgiving that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. It's a wonderful time to be with friends and family, good company, and to be thankful for all the wonderful things we have. Alrighty, so thankful for you guys. Thanks again for watching. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Tulu, take care. Bye. <laughs> I feel like I'm eating the turkey's butt. This is the front of the turkey, but I feel like I'm still eating its butt. <laughs>